Today is your lucky day. <laughs> You're getting two flights in one video. I'm just too generous. <laughs> okay, no, it's Vietjet Air. It's Vietnam's low-cost carrier. It's your budget airline's budget airline. It's not exactly a deal. But we are flying from Da Nang to Ho Chi Minh City and then Ho Chi Minh City to Melbourne. We've also got a special guest today, my friend Molly. She finally made it to Vietnam. So it's not just me behind the camera. We've got some alternative angles today. Whoa. <laughs> What's it like flying Vietnam's first privately owned airline? Their very low cost carrier? Let's go and find out. Okay, you got it. We can leave. <laughs> okay. This one? There's a lot of people here, and there's, there's, there's a queue there that they're not in. <laughs> Instead, it's just this. <laughs> True. You're not pregnant, right? She literally asked me. Oh. She's like, is she pregnant? Yes. Wait, she asked, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> for context, I'm pretty sure I got asked that because we ended up in exit row seats. We didn't pay for seat selection or anything, kind of booked this last minute, but for some reason we're given exit row seats when we checked in. The whole check-in process, as you can see, is a bit chaotic at Vietjet. We did get checked in pretty quickly though. Frozen food at an airport. Are we last call? Yes. <laughs> we had a long distance. There's a second queue in the jet bridge. And look how long it goes. Oh, that's okay. us. I was going to say, ha ha, look at those people, but it was us. Yeah, you go all the way to the other and across to the other. Smack that all on the floor. Smack, smack that till you get sore. Smack that till you get sore. Oh yeah? It's got leather seats. A bit nice. They look a little bit old. <laughs> There's no seat, seat next to it. Oh, I don't think there is any place. That's nice. And there's also two tray tables. Tray table one, tray table two. Okay, actually, that's the view. You're my best view. No, no you see, it's weird. I'll keep this pretty brief because look, we've all probably caught one hour flights before. These short little domestic flights, they're pretty boring, not a whole lot happens. There is sort of one notable thing about flying Vietjet compared to other low cost carriers. Everything on the menu, all the snacks and the noodles and stuff like that, were all pretty cheap. Obviously they're probably twice or three times the price of if you go into a, just a supermarket in Vietnam. But when we compare it to like a supermarket in Australia, it's like the same price or less. I guess I just found the menu to be noticeably cheaper than when I fly Jetstar or like AirAsia. I'm in the front lavatory, but I think this is actually the Sky Boss, Sky Boss lavatory because it's got a nice plant and it smells really good. Uh, we've got some hand towels and stuff, which look really nice. It smells quite nice in here, actually. It's a little bit old. It's not too dirty. Uh, I mean, this is a quick flight. Yeah, I might have accidentally snuck into the Sky Boss lab. But, well, anyway, time to return back to my seat. I don't know. I don't know. Six. 
So we had to spend one night in Ho Chi Minh City before our flight the next day back to Melbourne. We were staying in an airport hotel literally like 300 meters from the airport. Generally, I found infrastructure in Vietnam to be pretty good. There were pedestrian crossings that were actually kind of respected by cars and traffic lights with crossings and it all sort of worked. It's definitely one of the better places in Asia that I've, that I've been to in that regard. But Saigon Airport, like a lot of airports in the world, is not really a place you can leave on foot. <laughs> Party. It's my hotel up there. Airport's right there. I'm walking. So I gotta get over there somewhere, I think. Quick explanation, Molly was originally going to stay in Vietnam for a little bit longer, but then at the last second decided to book a ticket on my flight, hence why I start off walking the lonely road and then she just sort of appears. There's the explanation for why. <laughs> just like that, the cars stop for me. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. Starting to sweat a little bit. Up that way? Ah, oh, I got up. Got up too. Okay. Thank you, thank you. It wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's quite a cool airport, actually. Hello. Melbourne. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. 39F, I don't know if that's a good seat or a bad seat. I'm 90% sure that's my plane. You think I would have learned by now. You do not buy water if you're flying to Australia. Yeah, Jet Air. So when you travel with other people, you get to experience this thing called boarding last. It's a comfort, comfort thing for me. I'm just praying for rows of empty seats at the back. I'm not feeling strong on it. Feeling strong on it? I'm not. I didn't pay for any seat selection and from the way the seat map looked, it looked to me like this plane was going to be 60% full. But I think it's actually just maybe a, just a thing, nobody pays for seat selection. So anyway, I played the lottery and I lost pretty badly. So I sat in my original seat for a little bit and then somehow Molly, who bought her ticket two minutes before check-in closed, ended up with a whole row to herself. So I pretty quickly bounced over there and we ended up with three seats between the two of us. Destination airport that can be curious. Australia has the goofiest regulations. <laughs> Fumigation. I got nothing to say except for I love Australia. So we're not allowed water on the plane and we have to be fumigated. We took off 29 minutes late ended up landing right around when we were supposed to, so look, it wasn't really a delay. Anyway, today we're flying on one of Vietjet's A330-300s. They've got six of these in their fleet now that they're pretty much exclusively using to fly internationally. Now, these planes have 12 business class seats, which are these angled lie flat seats you can see here, and 365 standard economy seats. Strangely, they will sell you a Sky Boss ticket, which is just an economy seat, but at the front of the plane, but you also get like lounge access and a shuttle service, but it's almost the same price as the lie flat business class seat. So I don't know why anyone would ever book that. I, however, booked the cheapest eco ticket, paid extra for bags, and was right down the back of the plane. So let's talk about this economy seat. I actually found the leg room here to be okay. There's 31 inches of pitch. Generally, internationally, you're looking at 30 inches, so a little bit more than the average for a low-cost carrier. I, my knees weren't butting up against the seat in front of me, but it definitely didn't have 
tons of legroom. The recline was pretty standard. The seats are quite narrow though. On paper, they're 16 inches. They're noticeably very narrow. And if I was in my original seat, it would have been quite tight. There would have been three guys in three seats. It was, there's not much shoulder room. I'm very glad that we ended up getting three seats between the two of us. It made it way more, way more comfortable, obviously. There's no entertainment at all. There's not even any streaming to your device. That's fine. I came a little bit prepared. I had a bunch of things downloaded on Netflix, but still it does get a bit tedious if you don't come prepared. And I probably didn't quite download enough stuff onto my phone and probably needed more books and stuff like that. So the seats are all laid out in a 333 configuration, except for at the back where there's some on the sides, there's some two, some pair seats where it goes 232. If you're traveling with just one person and you want to make it a bit more comfortable, I would probably recommend or paying for seat selection just for those seats if you're just traveling as a pair. Overall, look, the seats for a low-cost carrier, they're okay. They're definitely not ridiculously comfortable or anything. Middle of the road, five out of 10. Okay, so this lav is completely unremarkable. It's pretty clean as you would expect, only half an hour into a flight. There's no s toilet seat covers. Uh, the toilet paper is running incredibly low actually, considering where we're at. You know, if the inevitable happens and you ran out of toilet paper, you could always go the hand towels, I guess. Yeah, let's go back to the seat. Okay, so I did order a meal service. I wasn't 100% sure. But I've got, what do I even have? Thai fried rice. Uh, first impressions are edible, but not looking, it's not looking beautiful. We also get a side of hot chili sauce. Here's the main, main dish. Got some chicken, some sort of egg strips, some sort of vegetable looking thing. It's looking actually all right. Um, I've only eaten a croissant today, so. I'm relatively hungry. It also, it was just like one of the meal combo things. It comes with a piece of all right looking banana bread, I guess. Ban chuo. Okay, let's uh, dig in. It's not bad. I mean, the rice is a little bit spongy. It's already a bit spicy, so I think I will miss the hot chili sauce. Okay, to be fair, the chicken, the chicken's actually pretty good. It is quite spicy already. The deeper I go, the better it gets, I think. That's what she said. <laughs> it's quite spicy, but you know what? I'm going to try the hot chili sauce just for something to do. I mean, this might not be that hot, right? The chili sauce doesn't actually really make it any hotter. Um, it's kind of just a sweet. I don't want to say sweet chili, but it's like still hot. You can taste the sauce, but it's not making the actual rice any hotter. All right, let's get into the banana bread. I was going to say it smells good, but actually on second, second sniff, it was a little bit suspicious. A little spongy and it doesn't really taste that much like banana, but I mean, it's sweet. It's edible. That was completely satisfying for what it was. I think it costs 150,000 dong, maybe 180,000 dong. Uh, which is about $10, $11, which is all right value. All right, let's uh, continue on. As there really wasn't that much else to do, the meal services did kind of just become the highlight of this flight. They did three of them over the eight hours, so they're actually pretty frequent. Wait, what are you ordering, Sam? What am I ordering? Yeah. I wish. Uh, and we bought things every single time just as something to do. Also, I loved that they would just sell vodka shots. It's so unhinged. Strangely, the menu in the seat back pocket wasn't actually what they were selling. So when he came around, he gave me a different menu and then we had to pick things like on the spot. That was fun. Yeah, we've got cash. Yeah, no, okay. So yeah, cash. You don't take cash? Uh, so I think they're not enough. I think so, yeah, no, we got, I got more. Oh, yeah, so Yeah, yeah no, we got He's just like, I was like, take cash? He's like, yeah, but you don't have enough. <laughs> Flipped it over this hundreds and I think I got my one. A quick note on the drinks, they're all pretty cheap, but they'll also refill drink bottles at the back of the plane if you ask nicely. We've got like the least appealing looking piece of beef ever here. Overall not bad, but this is a very suspicious lump of I think it's supposed to be beef. I think what this says is that there's 60 grams of beef in each thing, but you're kind of cheating if you count that. Yeah, it was still good though. 
What? For some reason, this toilet door does not close. I'm just bored eating now. Delicious. So we've got like not that long left now. Probably only like an hour at max. It's relatively comfortable. There's no in-flight entertainment, so that's kind of a bit boring. Overall, Vietjet, it's as good as Jetstar, if not probably slightly better, just because of the meal selections, in my opinion. Uh, well, actually, no, Jetstar has TVs, but they charge you for it, so it's kind of a much of a muchness. I wasn't expecting the flight to be this full. When I was looking at the seat maps for seat selection, there were still tons of seats to left to be selected, but I guess people just didn't pay for seating. On checking in, I got seat 39F which is the middle seat in the middle. That would have been really grim if I had to sit in my actual seat. Yeah, overall, not a terrible airline. Not a great airline, just a budget airline, but not a bad budget airline, I would say. Let's go get back to it, get back home, yeah. Not long you're gonna stay in Vietnam. Not long at all, not long enough. Expect the unexpected uh, is true, very true. That was an excellent landing. This was a very ridiculous landing. Am I going to stop the clap? Are you going to stop? How was the flag? Yeah, look. I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose to do it again, but it's done now. Without what you can expect. For what I paid. I mean, we paid it's 350 bucks. That's expected. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Check out flightformula.com. There's some like tools there, predominantly if you're into Qantas points. I'll see you next week for another video. Bye. Melbourne, I swear. I honestly felt safe in Vietnam.